Hello, so this is a new recording for the Quarkus Insight 148 with Microx inside. I've redone the recording because the network condition at the moment of the, the live stream were very bad and we had a, a blurry video. So once again, I'm very uh, apologize for this, but this is a new demo to go through the, the code of the application. So we started with a very simple uh, Quarkus application with one REST resource for placing new orders on the API orders pass that relies on an order service to implement the business logic of placing a new order. Okay. And this one was relying also on the REST client, the pass tree API client that is a simple micro-profile REST client that uh, invokes the remote uh, REST API. So let's start this application in dev mode and see what's going on. So as a regular developer, I want to try out my application. So I can, for example, issue a curl command on this to try placing a new order and it fails okay uh, the pastry is not available but let's check the, the details and you will see here that we've got type, typically an error while fetching my pastry uh, because of a network connection to this uh, process on port 1990 and this is totally normal because if we look at the application.properties file you will see that my uh, Quarkus REST client was configured to hit that endpoint. And so as a typical user, what I will have to do is to fetch this dependency, set up everything on my laptop, guess how it works, and finally configure everything to hit the, the endpoint. But Instead of doing that and doing that for many, many dependencies, we are just you going to use the Microx to provide and to use simulations. So the first thing to do is to uh, integrate Microx dependency into our application. So we are going to use to open the POM XML. And here we are going to use a new dependency that is the Microx one from the Microx organization. And we can use the provided scope as this is only what we are, what is required for build time and and test time. Okay, so um, this is one thing you, we need. The other one we need is also the the contracts and the examples that Microx will be using to uh, discover the different APIs and the different mocks it has to pro produce. So for that, I have prepared here in my contracts folder different resources. I'm going to paste here in my sources, just merging everything. And I show you here. Yes. So I've got one new order service open API that defines the interface of my order service I have to provide. And I've got also in my third parties resources, the API pastries open API. This is the external API I'm relying on. Okay. So once this is done, I'm, I'm ca I can just restart Quarkus so that it also restarts the Microsoft dev service. And this one will be able to discover everything. So let's switch now to the Quarkus dev console. That's okay. And we can visit the dev UI. And you will see right here, we've got this new extension, Microx, with the access to the Microx UI. And if you are looking at the API and services, you will see that yes, Microx has discovered everything, has discovered the API pass tree contracts, the order service API contracts, and typically for this one, it has discovered three different operations and samples, samples that were in open API file, but also in the Postman collection that is also included in the resources. And you will see that this is the 
certain point where uh, microcs actually expose those different simulations so that they can be used by my uh, application. So one last thing I have to do now is to reconfigure my application so that instead of using the default REST client that is hitting the 1990 port here, I can command this out and just paste here a new definition and the, the URL I want to use is, is the one provided by the Microx dev service. Okay. And we are just here after this convention. REST endpoints starts with REST subpass and then you have the name of the API you want to hit and the version of this API, simply put. Okay. So let's start my application once again, just to be sure this setting has been refreshed. And now if I'm hitting the, the curl command once again, let's do it. You will see that now I've got a result and my order was actually created. So because the whole application has been uh, reconfigured and it actually uses the uh, micro simulation just under the hood. Okay. Simply put. Very simply put. I have to refresh. Yes. This one. So that's very convenient because instead of pulling out dozens of dependencies and figure, figuring out how those external services are supposed to work, you can really easily uh, mock everything directly within your Quarkus application. Okay, no need to set up anything else, just importing the contracts, configuring this here, and that's okay. And this works for any kind of APIs, gRPC, GraphQL, uh, asynchronous API as well. Okay, now the second part of the demonstration is about uh, using Microx within your unit test. So let's imagine uh, I've got this past three API client here and I want to write a test for uh, this one. I've prepared a simple test. And you can see that actually writing a test is really easy because you just have to um, call this client that is injected here with the correct argument. So typically here, I want here to list the different pastries having a medium, having a small size. Okay. And I expect receiving just one pastry. For the second method, I can just um, ask for the millefeuille pastry and check that the millefeuille is actually available. Okay, so we can just run the test here. And you'll see that what we are doing here is actually launching the Quarkus application, running containers, launching the microxf service and reconfiguring the application once again to uh, hit the simulation that is provided by Microx. And so one thing here is that we are not mocking the micro profile REST client, we are mocking the remote dependency, so all the network and serialization protocols, stacks and layers are really tested out, so you're sure you will be able to call a remote API, a pastries API later on. Okay, so very, very handy to do this kind of stuff here. Run this second test once again, and you see, yeah, it's pretty fast. Starting microbes, filling it with with a specification, making it, producing smart simulation, and then testing and dropping everything. Okay, very fast. So the third use case is about uh, contract testing our new API because have you seen it here? We have produced the 
order resource. And we want to be sure that the API, the interface that is exposed to our partners is actually the one that, that matches the order service open API. So in order to do that, we can also use this kind of test, order resource contract test here. And the things here are going to be um, a little bit different because we are not going to use our classes. We are going to use some specific Microx provided classes to prepare a test request. And so here you can see that I can, yes, uh, create, not create here. I have, yes, to import on Maven. And then here, yes, test request. Just let me import the class, okay. Just let me also import this one, okay. So I'm preparing a test request asking to test against this interface definition here, the order service API for the version 0.1. I'm asking to test using a testing strategy. This is what we call the runner type. And I want to check the open API schema confirmance. And what I want to test is the internal endpoint that is exposed by the Quarkus application. So I'm using the Quarkus HTTP port that is injected here. Okay, and the pass is slash API. And finally, I'm gonna ask my Microx container to run this test request and to give me the result. Okay, this is what we are doing here. The only thing I need here is the URL of this Microx container. And this, be, this can be uh, simply retrieved using configuration injection here. So typically I've got this Quarkus Microx default HTTP that gives me the Microx container URL. So I can launch this test request and check the result running this test here. Oops. And you can see that it fails. I was expecting a success, but I get a failure. So I may inspect the complete response here because uh, Microx give you the, the, yeah, the detailed uh, response on why it fails. So running again the test. You can see that I will have the failure messages here. And you realize that this is failing because the response I get from the API has a missing required property. It, it don't have the customer ID property checking here again and yes you can see that I got an ID, status, product entities, uh, a total price but I don't have any uh, customer ID but it is a, a required property. So checking at this at my order service for example I can see that yes in fact I have, have forgotten to include the customer ID and this is why I'm failing. So. This is one nice thing with Microx is that whatever the kind of um, contract you are using, it could be OpenAPI, it could be um, gRPC protobuf, it could be Avro schema for async, uh, asynchronous APIs, it could be uh, uh, GraphQL, whatever. This is a very um, consistent way of doing things. You just have to ask Microx to run the test for you. And you don't have to take care about all the yes, all the specificities of how to do contract testing and schema uh, validation with those different technologies. Also, one very nice thing with Microx and Quarkus integration is that everything can be run continuously. So typically, if you are using this continuous test feature, you can see that you are able to. Or oh, maybe I have to yes to just refresh here. You can start here the continuous testing, see that all the tests are being executed and 
one is failing. This is the open API contract. So as I'm fixing my implementation, so here uncommenting the customer ID, you will easily see that now the tests are okay. Okay, and still very fast, a few milliseconds. And so it's very handy, yes, to, to check in real time that you are not introducing any breaking changes regarding the latest version of your uh, API uh, contract, but also maybe uh, regarding the previous one, if you have kept the previous one within your repository and me and my Crocs has discovered those previous ones. So really, really easy to be sure you are not breaking the backward compatibility with the previous version. Okay, so that's it for today. We've gone through the different uh, use cases and I hope this one was very much uh, was clearer than the previous recording. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.